the company of other people. We never do well alone. And we never do well in, alone in addiction recovery. That's absolutely true. So the I would almost guarantee historically that at least one of those clients that you can see is dead. Feel it. it's good to see at least one or two. We don't feel very good about that. We know better. We like I'm, I'm looking at this girl we just thinking, who's that girl? I don't, she looks familiar. So many of us is she alive? He took everyone's desperation and everyone's fear and said, I'll take care of it. Trust me. And then he fucked people's children. <laughs> In this country, we've been having this war on drugs for fucking ever, but we don't know how to treat anyone for it. For the millions who fight addiction, a chance at true recovery feels like an answered prayer. In LA County, there are more treatment centers than anywhere in the world. Not just in the United States, but in the world. But an organization called Community Recovery LA, or CRLA for short, promises that their addiction treatment is the best there is. At first, it seemed amazing. Helping a lot of people, that's what it seemed like it was in the beginning. It was about the vision of what we were doing. Its founder asks members for complete commitment and total trust. I was willing to do pretty much whatever they asked of us. Nobody would talk to outsiders. You bought it. We don't tend to think of addiction and cults as going together, but that's a perfect space for a successful cult. Now, members of CRLA are revealing how a center promising to pull them out of their dark hole buried them in it. I drank the Kool-Aid. It turned people into believers, and that's what you need to have some sort of cult, is true believers. I went to rehab to get better, and I came out worse. My first inkling that something was sort of different was when I noticed that all of his assistants and drivers were young women. Those women didn't have a curfew and often didn't need to be drug tested. I became his personal assistant. Little tasks, whatever he would ask me. The sheer volume of clients that we had, you wouldn't notice that one of them wasn't where they were supposed to be. I brought drugs into the treatment center and I got high and passed out in the bathroom, in the shower. By 2016, the number of overdoses within the community is growing, along with the doubts about the program's efficacy. And not every relapsing client gets a second chance at sobriety. This is Mo. He, uh, Mo was incredibly charismatic. You got sweat between your rolls? Yeah. He was kind. He was raised well. He was a good guy. I remember that he had relapsed. He, unbeknownst to staff, got another client's car keys, and he overdosed in that car. This kid had no more life, and we didn't help him. Felt like every couple weeks I was getting news that someone that we knew who'd been through the program had died. I've probably worked at 30 different treatment centers in the last 10 years, and I've never seen that many clients die. Questions begin to swirl around CRLA about the increase of relapses and why authorities weren't being notified of overdoses. They should have called the cops. If he was holding drugs in a treatment facility, why the fuck didn't they call the cops? Because maybe he would have gotten another charge, but he might be alive today. At the same time, the rumors were flying about what Batham was doing. So Batham was working behind the scenes saying what to do and what not to do. Rumors began to go around. Rumors about Chris's own drug use. Look, you know, if there's smoke, there's probably fire. We're getting the sense that something weird was 
was happening. And, and we didn't know exactly what it was, but something's not fucking right. You know, we've had enough deaths. So I think we've had people, seven die. Those motivate me a lot. Those feel like loss, like losing. You know, those feel like we didn't do it. Inside CRLA, the addiction recovery center that's built a cult of community healing, a spike of overdose deaths is raising doubts about Chris Batham's methods. But he has an idea to help them keep the faith. He knew how to muster the troops, you know, and, and he knew exactly what the fuck he was doing. Chris started doing an experiential program. They sent us on adventures like to Colorado where we went on a 12 day camping trip. But upon landing in Colorado, I still had like $600 in my bank account um, from the work that I was doing for Batham. I went and bought drugs off the street in Denver, a city I'd never been to before in my life. And I, um, I smoked some crack. I was very vulnerable when it came to these sort of things. I hadn't developed uh, any of the tools. When staff relapse at CRLA, Batham returns them to treatment. This endless cycle of client to staff, back to client again, stretches a rehab visit well past 90 days, and sometimes indefinitely. Batham created this sort of closed system where even if you achieved your recovery, well, then you were gonna get a job that he controlled. You're going to relapse. It's one way that a cult can establish these people are going nowhere, they are locked in. 